another type of network intrusion detection system is Bro. Now, Bro, the network security monitor, is different than some of the others we've looked at because Snort and Suricata both use a Snort rule set definition type, and Bro uses something entirely different. So Bro, as I said, is a network security monitor, adaptable, efficient, flexible, provides logs so that forensics professionals can make use of them as well. So if there's an incident, they can go back in and actually see what happened in terms of the network activity. We'll do in-depth analysis, highly stateful, open interfaces, open source. Some of this anyway is not significantly different from what we've looked at in the past. Where we do run into some serious differences, though, is I'm going to show you Try Bro in your browser. Now, we looked at the rule sets that we had with Snort and again with Suricata in the way they did it. This is very different. So you would create a set of rules using a language similar to this. So you can create these rules. Let's just do a run here using their example PCAP. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, you can see the output is hello world. And then we've got some output logs indicating all of the data that was found in that PCAP file. So we've got the ability to do some pretty extensive analysis and also generate some interesting rules using a C-like programming language that you can create your own rule set pretty easily with. And again, we've got all of the other features of a network intrusion detection system, as well as a number of other capabilities. And we'll take a look at the way that we would configure and use Bro IDS coming up. Before we get started taking a look at the configuration for Bro, I just wanted to take a quick look at doing the installation. Now, there are packages for some Linux distributions. The package that you get installing Bro on an Ubuntu Linux system doesn't include all of the utilities that you might get if you were installing from source. So you can certainly install from source. The downside to installing from source is you have to install a number of dependencies. So you can see all of the dependencies here, libpcap, openssl, bind8, libz, bash, python, make, and then a C compiler. Now, if you're doing this on a production system, you don't want all of these dependencies there. So this is a case where you probably want to build a package somewhere else that includes all of the bits that you want and then install that package. Whether you've got a Debian system, you would want to do a .deb or if you've got a Red Hat system, you'd need to create a .rpm. Whatever distribution you've got, you would need to create a distribution package that would be relevant to your particular system. Of course, you could also just make use of the Bro package that is included on the various distributions. Now, I've got one here that I have installed from source, and I installed it into slash op slash bro. Inside, you can see we've got a bin directory, an Etsy directory, include lib logs, and so forth. The configuration is in the Etsy directory, as you might expect. The thing that we want to take a look at, first of all, is I want to look at the node.config. Sure enough, I've got interface equals ETH0, as you can see here. And because my interface here is not ETH0, that's something I have to fix. So I'm just going to change the node.cfg, and I'm going to replace ETH0 with ENS33. Now I've got my correct configuration for the node, and we can take a look at the other configuration settings here. So we've got networks.cfg. This tells us what the private IP address space is. So we've got... 10.0.0.0 slash 8 and then 192.168.0.0 slash 16. It's missing one of them, which would be 172.16.0.0 slash 12. But that's okay because that's my local network here. Now, the other ones I'm not going to worry so much about. Really what I've got here for my configuration that I really care about is the node.cfg. 
So I've got that in place. Now we can go and do a little bit of looking at how you would run Bro in order to do the monitoring. We're going to start running Bro. And before I get started, I just want to take a quick look at the broctl.cfg. Now, what that's going to do is if we send any emails out from Bro, it's going to go to Ruit localhost. That's the default. And I'm going to leave that alone. And frankly, there are some log rotation settings in broctl.cfg. I'm going to leave those alone as well. Now I'm going to go into bin and I can run broctl. And now we've got a little command line interface to bro. So this is a little shell. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run install. So we're going to install the site policies and then generate some scripts and some other configuration files. Now, all we have to do is say start. It's going to start up bro. And at this point I can just quit out of here. If I do PS AUX and then look for bro, we should see that we've got bro running. So bro is running at this point, And if I look really carefully, you can see that it is used the interface that we have specified. Now, what I want to do is I'm just going to do a couple of quick browsing things just to generate a little network traffic. And we could go to and so forth. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the logs directory. And now we've got some logs here. So I can take a look at the logs. And you can see that we've got a little bit of traffic that it has generated for us. The logs that we've got, if we look very carefully, you can see the field. So you've got timestamp and user ID. And then we've got some other ID fields, file name tags, username, password, and so forth. We've got a number of fields that we can look at. Now, one of the nice things about Bro is that it's really almost a framework that you can use in order to do your monitoring. What we've got running at this point is really just the network monitor. On top of that, and all of the logs that we've got here, what you want is to grab some scripts or create some scripts that will actually generate some reports for you. At this point, really what we've got are just a lot of details around what happened. Certainly you can look at these files here and be able to see what's been going on on the network, but some of the power of Bro really comes from being able to write some scripts using the Bro syntax in order to generate some reports you can make use of. There's a lot of detail around writing those scripts that you can find on Bro's website. And we'll take a look at some of the rules that actually Bro uses coming up next. Just like other intrusion detection systems, even though Bro calls itself a network monitoring solution, it does do some intrusion detection as well. And just like those other ones, what you need to do is have a set of rules so that Bro actually knows what to look for. We're going to go into the share directory. And this is where you can find a lot of the rules and policies and so forth that Bro actually uses. Going to go into site here, and you can see that there are some local dot bros here. And we'll take a quick look at one of these. So this is the local site policy. And of course, you could customize this if you wanted to. This is really about indicating what should be loaded when Bro starts up. There are a number of scripts that are related to the protocols, for example, that get loaded up. So FTP, SMTP, SSH, HTTP, and so on. You can see there's one that has been commented out. If you want to be able to see web apps, you could uncomment that and then, of course, start Bro up again. But here's all of the Bro scripts that get started up when Bro starts. What I want to do at this point is I want to go find those and we're going to go into policy. And then you can see here we've got miscellaneous frameworks and protocols. 
this is the location that that bro startup script, the basic policy was referencing. So we could go into protocols, for example, and then go into HTTP. And then you've got the various bro scripts that would be relevant for loading up in that policy. So let's just take a look at the detect web apps bro that was commented out. So we could look at detect web apps. And this is a script that has been written for Bro so that it knows what it's looking for in terms of detecting web applications as it's doing the network monitoring. So this is a scripting language that Bro uses. We're not going to get into all of the syntax, but this is really one of the differences between Bro and some of the others in that something like Snort actually uses a rule to detect behavior where what Bro gives you is an environment so that you can generate scripts so that you can look for certain things and then do certain behaviors based on what it is that you find. You can see there's an event here that's HTTP header, and then we get some variables that get passed into this particular event so that you can do something based on that. If you are familiar with a C-like programming language, you may be able to read this reasonably well. It's reasonably straightforward if you're familiar with programming. Of course, if you're not familiar with programming, this is probably not something that you're going to be spending a lot of time with as you're working with Bro. But you can certainly see all of the rules that are in place here. And we could go into frameworks, for example, and see what else we've got. So communication, control, packet filter signatures, and so forth. So if you want to work with rules in Bro, what you really want to do is get used to some of the scripting that you can do in Bro. And again, that's something that you can spend a fair amount of time learning. And you would typically do that by going to the Bro website and really working through some of their examples and looking through their documentation. There is an interactive environment on the Bro website so that you can actually interact directly with a working bro instance without necessarily having to have one on your local system and play around there.